What's up people, welcome back to the channel. In this video we're going to be going over the Sorcerer Tank build for Elsewhere. Uh, sorcerer Tanks are relatively fun to play with, uh, a little unconventional, but they are kind of fun and for man content. Uh, trials are alright, but I definitely have a lot of more fun with these than for man content. Now, I'm an Imperial, my max magic is 21.9, maximum health is 35, Maximum stamina is 25. I have 28 points into Magicka, 13 into health, 23 into stamina, and 1.3k magic recovery. Resistances unbuffed is 23.6 spell and 23.4 physical. Boon I'm running is the Atro, and I'm using basic tri stat food. Now, this is a. This is. Well, let's go ahead and go over the champion points before we get into the setup. Uh, champion points. 28 into Ironclad, 23 into Spell Shield, 64 Hardy, 64 Elemental Defender, 25 Heavy Armor Focus, 43 Quick Recovery, and 23 Bastion. 28 Warlord, 14 Sprinter, 19 Bastion Focus, 64 Arcana, 64 Tenacity, 61 Shadow Ward, and 20 Tumbling. Now, uh, 64 into Blessed, and then the rest you can just kind of stick around. Uh, the blue trees really doesn't matter that much on tanks. Now, sets wise, this is something that I was just trying to have fun with. I was just messing around with it, and I actually enjoyed my time using these setups. So I thought I would go ahead and just do the video about it and put it out there for other people. Um, just one of these sets really don't get used a whole lot, and uh, it was just fun watching people basically having 3-4 health bars. Uh, so the monster set we're running is Lord Warden, all tri-stat, heavy infused, or not heavy infused, but a medium and light piece, uh, one helmet infused, and shoulder sturdy with tri-stat close on it. What Lord Warden does, it gives us physical and spell resistance on one piece. Two piece when you take damage, you have a 50% chance to summon a shadow orb for 10 seconds to increase the physical and spell resistance of you and your allies within 8 meters by 3.8. This effect could occur once every 10 seconds. So this right here is going to make our allies a little tankier. And then the first 5 piece set we are running is Imperial. We're running infused chest and legs with gloves, waist, and boots all sturdy, all with tri stack gloves. Now, what Imperium does, this comes from White Gold Tower. It gives us max health, max health, 4% healing taken, and when you take damage, you have a 10% chance to grant you and your allies within 8 meters a damage shield that absorbs 13.2k damage for 6 seconds. This effect can occur once every 15 seconds. Now, most people, most, the average player in dungeons and things like that, their health, you know, you'll be looking at 16 to 19k health, and a 13.2k shield is more than 50% of their health. And then on top of that, the second 5 piece that we are running is Lunar Bastion. Uh, now this set really does not get used a whole lot, and uh, I had these pieces just sitting around and wanted to give them a shot, and um, it was actually fun. And what Lunar Bastion does, I'm running three pieces of jewelry, uh, all healthy, uh, two with magic recovery, one with a shield play enchant to reduce the cost of Bastion block, I'm running an infused sword with a weakening enchant, a lightning staff infused with a crush enchant on the back bar, then an infused shield with just a max stamina enchant on. Now, what Lunar Bastion does is that it gives us healing, 4% healing taken, gives us minor angus, reducing the damage we take from Dungeon Trial and Arena Monster by 5%, gives us max health, and when you activate your synergy, you grant a Lunar Blessing under you for 10 seconds. The blessing grants a damage shield every 2 seconds that absorbs 2.6k damage for you and your allies within 8 meters. Um, so essentially, while they're standing within the little area, it's a big blue circle that eventually comes out. So while they're standing in the Lord of Warden, you'll have Lunar Bastion there, so you'll be giving them 2.6k damage shield every two seconds. Plus, they'll get Imperium, so they get more shield. So they're basically getting um, a health bar size shield every so often. Uh, it definitely worked out really well. Uh, there were some situations where this was not a good set, where it didn't work very well. Uh, it worked, but it just wasn't great. Uh, Fall Creed Hold, the very last boss, you know, where everybody's standing behind the pillar, we had a bunch of ads on us. Uh, they were getting tons of shields. They were able to survive most of the hits, and we was able to do damage. Um, they were able to survive even with their healer going down, because they were just getting constant shields. Um, it works out. works in a lot of places. It works. Uh, I tried it out, and 
Also fabrication, of course that was only on normal. Uh, but we only had one healer, uh, which I, I, the other healer DC'd at the final fight. And the shields, with the help of that one healer, and then the shields, the healer was like a CP400. And we were able to basically stay alive there, which I do think they nerfed the missiles that come down. But it was definitely fun either way. Uh, so I just had a lot of fun with this build, this setup. Uh, so I thought I would bring it in. I thought I would show it. Uh, make a video and show it to the rest of y'all because uh, it is a relatively fun build. Uh, Lunar Bastion now it's not a set that you're going to use a whole lot. Imperium is not a bad set to have in general. Like if you're going out and you're farming your tanking sets you're trying to get the sets that you, you may come across needing. Imperium is a good set to have. Lunar Bastion not so much but paired with Imperium and paired with uh, a couple abilities it worked out pretty nicely and it was just a ton of bubbles and a ton of shields going up so I had a lot of fun with it. Now skills there's a couple ways you can play a tank sorcerer you can have your pet your clan fear for heals and things like that but I went more for the uh, just a basic approach without a pet uh, the first ability I was using is pierce armor course this is the ability you're going to use no matter what kind of setup you use uh, it's going to thrust your weapon dealing some damage but you taunt the enemy for 15 seconds and you also flex the enemy with major fracture and major breach reducing their damage reducing their physical resistance and spell resistance by 5.2k for 12 seconds so you want to reapply this about every 10 seconds or so to make sure that major breach and major fracture never fall off heroic slash surprise an enemy with a deep lunge dealing damage and reducing their movement speed by 60 percent for four seconds also flex the enemy with minor main reducing their damage done by 15 percent for 12 seconds you gain minor heroism granting you one ultimate every 1.5 seconds for nine seconds and then our shield is oh, our shield is Hardened Ward, Conjure Gloves of Daedric Energy for protection and granting a damage shield that for you and your pets that absorb 11.3k damage for 6 seconds. Damage shield, strength co cop, capped, wow, I don't know why I was having so much trouble with that one word. Damage shield strength capped at 50% of your max health. Dark Deal, Bargain with Darkness to restore 9.1k health and 3.6k stamina instantly and an additional 2.4k stamina over 20 seconds so essentially um, we're going to restore we're going to ditch uh, magicka to basically just heal and to restore stamina uh, for whatever reason we're having some issues need a quick heal well, that'll help us out now absorb magicka bolster your defense is warming up to 19.2k damage for the next spell projected cast you and healing for 16% of your max health while you have a shield equipped this ability slot, the amount of damage you can block is increased by 8% and the cost of blocking is reduced by 8%. Ultimate we're running, uh, the ultimate that I was running last was Absorption Field. Create a globe with magic suspension for 12 seconds for removing and preventing all enemy area of effect abilities from occurring in the area. Enemies within the globe are stunned, while enemy players will be silenced rather than stunned. The globe also heals you and your allies for 1k health every 0.5 seconds. Now another ultimate that I was using here, um, that was absolutely that I was having a lot of fun with was barrier for a moment. Um, so I unmorphed it to show these. In the other tank videos I already had it morphed, so I went to uh, show the other morphs as well. This is the one that I was using mostly. This is the one I'd use when I use barrier. Replenishing barrier basically gives them a, a 23k shield. Uh, each time a ward dissolves, you restore six ultimate and 329 magic. Now the other barrier, what it does is the reviving barrier. It invokes gives them the, the same same damage shield, 23, 23k, but the ward also heals you and your allies for 16.8k health over 30 seconds. So this one basically gives us more ultimate pack and magicka, where this one just will give a heal afterwards. Uh, so you can pick and choose which one you want to use, whichever one is fine, but like I said, I mostly go through Replenishing Barrier. That's my personal choice because when it ends, I get ultimate pack and I can just kind of pump it out. Pump out more ultimates quicker with Replenishing. So, but with the uh, bubbles from the barrier, Imperium, and the Lunar Bastion, uh, it's, they get a huge damage shield from the group. So, back bar, like stuff, we have Inner Rage. This is our uh, range taunt. Ignites fires dealing 2.1k max damage and taunting them to attack you for 15 seconds. A ranged ally targeting the taunting enemy has a 38% chance to activate the Radiant Synergy dealing 1.6k magic damage to them over 2 seconds and an additional 5.3k magic damage to them and other nearby enemies. So it's a ranged taunt, just you hit them with the taunt, you pull them in so that way they can't, they won't run off because they're not taunting. 
Blockade of Storms. Uh, slam your staff down to create a storm barrier in front of you, dealing 1.1k shock damage to enemies in the target area every one second, and second cussed enemies off balance for five seconds. That's what you really want to use to blockade the uh, lightning staff for, because most people, most DPS, magic and DPS anyways, are running around with fire staffs. Um, let this right here will at least set them off balance, and when that does, it will proc concuss. It will proc minor vulnerability, where they take 8% more damage. So, that's why we run the lightning staff back one. Silver Leash. Fire a guard crossbow hook to pull an enemy to you, dealing 4.1k physical damage, and reducing their movement speed by 40% for 4 seconds. This is basically our chains. Uh, just like the unrelated grips from um, the DK, and then of course with the warden, with the little the devices where it teleports them to them. Uh, we don't have an actual pull in our toolkit, so instead of running Swarm Mothers, we can just slot Silver Leash and we will we'll be able to pull enemies to us that are far away. Now, then we have Restraining Prison. Call forth Desert Charge from the Earth to immobilize enemies in front of you for 6 seconds. Gain Major Vitality for 2 seconds plus 1 second per enemy in the area up to 6. This is basically our our talents, more or less. It's our CC ability. Basically, we pull people in, we hit them with this, they won't run away. So, and then we have uh, Hurricane, which manifests yourself as pure air, buffing nearby enemies with wind dealing 5, 558 physical damage every 1 second for 15 seconds. The wind grows in damage size, increasing up to 100%, 150% more damage and up to 9 meters in size. While in this form, you get major resolve, major ward, and minor expedition. Increase your physical and spell resistance by 5.2k and your movement speed by 10%. Now, um, our stats unbuffed is 20.3k and 21.1 on our staff bar, and on our sword mode bar it is 23.6 and 23.4. So, with, uh, let's see what's going on here. Alright, so, with that, let's go ahead and buff up here. Check, go back to our stat sheets. We're at 25.6 and 25.4, and 28.8 and 28.6. Now with Lord Warden proc, we're setting right up under uh, cap. So, it is, it works wonders. It works out for us. We didn't have much, I didn't have much of an issue with it. And then... The last ultimate that we use is Warhorn. Surround your Warhorn. Sound a Warhorn to rally your forces, increasing you and your allies' max match good max sound by 10% for 30 seconds. You and your allies get major force, increasing your critical damage by 15% for 9 seconds. This just increases the damage and allows the stuff to go faster. So, Warhorn is pretty self explanatory. Um, when it comes to pets, uh, you can always drop. Um, there's not really much to drop from these setups to run pets. I would drop the Warden for Mighty Chudan, so that way you can run, uh, you can put your plant fear here, and then run uh, Drop Dark Deal if you wanted to, so that way you can just have your plant fear on your bar. Um, that would be the only way uh, I would put a pet on my bar with this setup. That would be the only changes I wouldn't make myself. That would be about the only way if you want to have your plant fear, your pet, there, drop Dark Deal, drop Hurricane, put on Chudan instead of Lord of Warden, and then you will be fine. You'll be able to have that on your bar. Plus, with uh, your pet, you don't really need the heal from Dark Deal, so because just casting it again will heal you yourself. So, yeah, I don't know. Let's see how big that heal would be. Uh, so, it's the Uncivil Familiar. You would then. Turn it into the clan fear, and it will give you one seven million extra clan a 13.8k heal. Um, let's just go ahead. And uh, so it's a 13. Oh wow, well, okay, 14.3k heal to where this is a 9.1k heal, but it also gives you back stamina and more stamina over 20 seconds. So it's just it's up to you on what you want to do. Uh, you can run it either way, but like I said, if you want to run the clan fear, drop dark deal, drop hurricane, put. Uh, chew down on. I'll put chew down over Lord Warden, and you should be fine with this setup. Uh, if you don't want to run Lunar Bastion, like for some reason you don't like the setup, like I get it, shield isn't that much. If you don't want to run it, then you can always run. Uh, you can just put Plague Doctor here, or you can run something else like uh, 
leeching, you can run uh, alkosh, you can run uh, let's see, what's another? You can run thunderbug if you just want to blast, shoot out lightning. You know, if you just want to have some fun. Um, but yeah, but I was having fun with Imperium and Lunar Bastion. If you want to give it a shot, this was the setup that I was using, and I'm having a lot of fun with it. So uh, that's pretty much the Stamps work build. So until next time, I'll have a great day. Have fun.